Here at UCSF, we're absolutely convinced that we have the best treatment strategy for TRAP. And the reason why we're absolutely convinced is twofold. One is, is that our results bear it out. We have the best results in the literature. The second reason is, is that with respect to you, we can do this with the least intervention to you. So we do an ultrasound at presentation and then as a group discuss the appropriateness of an intervention. In TRAP, there's only one potentially viable fetus who's at risk during the pregnancy because of its high flow state, sending blood to the, um, the, it's the co-twin mass of tissue. Our um, experience over the last few years has been that if we can safely obliterate blood flow to that mass of tissue in a minim minimally invasive, effective way, that bodes best. We put in a single needle, and using ultrasound guidance, we correct the problem by stopping the blood flow to the abnormal twin. And this lets the normal twin need to only beat for one as opposed to two. And this greatly increases survival for the normal twin. And following that intervention, we use um, ultrasound assessment uh, immediately post-procedure and then cut back to the kind of usual occasional ultrasound to uh, monitor the, the developing fetus. The one additional step we offer is after this intervention, we would sometimes offer a fetal MR to look at the brain of the, of the living twin. If you're being admitted for a radiofrequency ablation for TRAP um, or for TTTS, then we would admit you to the hospital the night before, start your IV, draw your labs, do your pre-op teaching, make sure you're fully admitted and seen by the doctors. Early the next morning, the operating room will come upstairs to get you and take you downstairs where the procedure is performed on the fourth floor. Once they're finished, you'll come back upstairs to 15 and recover in our recovery room and then be admitted to our antepartum service where we are monitoring you for contractions and we're also monitoring your baby to make sure that that surviving child is doing okay post-procedure. Taking a look at the fetal heart rate and then again, the most common complication being contractions. So we keep a close eye on your uterus to make sure it's not contracting too much. If it starts to, we have medications that we can use to treat those contractions to try and get rid of them. And then most of the time, you're sent home the day after the procedure is finished.